Now, US President Joe Biden has welcomed the results of the midterm elections after his party fared better than expected. US media had predicted huge gains for Republicans, but these failed to materialize. However, Biden's Democrats do look set to lose control of the House of Representatives. The battle for the upper chamber, the Senate, is also on a knife edge, with three states still left to declare. There was a spring in the step of the US president as he faced reporters at the White House. The weight of pre-election fears perhaps lifted from his shoulders after better than expected midterm results. It was a good day, I think, for democracy. And I think it was a good day for America. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little horse. Our democracy has been tested in recent years, but uh, with their votes, uh, the American people have spoken and proven once again that democracy is who we are. This was a big test for Joe Biden, who couldn't hide his glee when congratulating Democrats who'd helped see off a predicted Republican surge. Joe Biden, congratulations, man. Congratulations. Joe Biden, congratulations, kid. How are you, Mr. President? I'm better knowing you won, I tell you. Hey, Gov, congratulations. Well, I'm so happy for you. I really am. The Democrats may have done better than even the president expected, but with votes still being counted, there is still much to play for. What happens here in Nevada could be pivotal to who wins control of the Senate. It's one of three states that could swing the U.S. upper house back into Republican hands. Patience now the watchword here, with hundreds of staff working to process ballots. Another is Georgia, where the race between Democratic incumbent Raphael Warnock and Republican challenger Herschel Walker will now go into a runoff in December. At the end of the day, everyone wants to know that we have honest and fair elections, and we do. I ask the voters to come out and vote one last time. Just a few days ago, former President Donald Trump's mood had been buoyant as he celebrated initial Republican successes. He handpicked many of the names on the ballot in key states. But in true Trump style, he's now described the vote as somewhat disappointing in a message to supporters on his own social platform, whilst also hailing a very big victory. We can get more from our Washington correspondent, Michaela Kufner. Michaela, Joe Biden clearly pleased with the outcome. Was it really a good day for the Democrats, though? Well, overall, it wasn't, uh, but it wasn't as bad as expected. I guess success always is what you get against the initial expectation. And there was lots of talk about a red wave. Well, that simply didn't materialise. Uh, the Republicans fancied themselves of expecting a red tsunami. Um, so uh, Joe Biden's Democrats held up much better than all the pollsters predicted and than that many of themselves actually uh, believed. And this is against the backdrop of uh, an almost political tradition that the party of um, uh, whoever is president usually doesn't do particularly well in midterm elections. There was a very high turnout that usually favours the Democrats. So this is a highly politicised country, certainly uh, by midterm terms. And Joe Biden, uh, his party, uh, I would like to stress, pulled this off against a backdrop of uh, fairly low approval ratings of the president and three quarters of the country saying that uh, the US isn't going in the right direction. So figure that. Overall, the Democrats held up. A sweeping success looks different and Trump failed to meet all expectations. Which brings me nicely on to the next question. Where do the midterms leave the Republicans now? And what about Trump? I mean, is the Republican Party starting to question his leadership? The short answer is yes. Clearly, the gloves are off. Uh, we're seeing Mike Pence, uh, the former vice president, now come up uh, publicly with uh, statements talking about his last days in office, uh, talking about the president um, after he told him uh, that he didn't have the power to overturn votes, the president basically telling him to do so. This is very interesting because Mike Pence, too, had followed uh, the rhetoric of doubting uh, elections doubting the results uh, throughout this campaign and it appears that the gloves are off. The Republicans are 
launching something that one could at this moment describe as soul searching where they went wrong. Donald Trump backed candidates didn't do as well as expected. And the big new shining star is Ron DeSantis, who really with a surprisingly large margin won in Florida. He's managed to capture the all important uh, Latino voter group. And uh, he himself is speaking of a new political era. So um, it's very interesting timing that Trump still uh, looks set on declaring this coming Tuesday that he wants to run again as president. But a lot can happen in a few hours in US politics. Michaela Kufner reporting from Washington, D.C. Thanks so much for that. For more, joining me now in the studio is Tyson Barker, senior fellow at the German Council on Foreign Relations here in Berlin. Welcome, Tyson. Now, we've just heard Joe Biden there sounding pretty pleased um, with the outcome. But what does this actually mean for the, for the Democrats? What will they be able to get done in the next two years? Well, I think it's going to be very dependent on what happens with the Senate. Um, generally, obviously, uh, we are looking at a situation where the Senate could go either way still. Um, but what we see in this result is the country remains still very divided. Uh, even if the Republicans win control of the House, which looks likely, it's going to be just within a couple of seats. And that's going to leave the House quite dysfunctional because uh, the leader, Kevin McCarthy, a weak leader, will have to corral, coordinate different, very fractious uh, fractions of the party, uh, the MAGA group, the um, the Freedom Caucus, et cetera, and then there's going to be this Trump pressure. So it's not looking like the legislative agenda will be the place where policy moves forward. It's going to be executive action. The MAGA group, just to make clear, is the Trump, the Trumpists. Right, the right. Make America Great Again group. That's it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit more about the Republicans. So where do the midterms really leave them? And what about Donald Trump? Well, if you look at the, the candidates, including Brad Raffensperger, who was just speaking, uh, the uh, Secretary of State of Georgia, who won his re-election decisively and was, of course, the center of a lot of pressure from Trump to, uh, to uh, look for votes in the 2020 election, a lot of the candidates, the Republican candidates, who are able to emancipate themselves from Trump actually much overperformed, outperformed. You see this in Ohio, you see it in Georgia, with the governor in Georgia as well, you see it in Florida. So there's going to be a lot of elite pressure in Republican circles, including conservatives, Fox News, etc., uh, to try to bring up new power centers within the party. You touched on it a little bit earlier. What effect are these midterms likely to have on the political dynamic in, in Washington? I mean, will the Republicans, given that it wasn't the red tsunami that was potentially expected, will the Republicans offer some level of cooperation, do you think? Well, in contrast to 2010, where there was the last major Republican shellacking uh, in a congressional election and they took control of the House uh, with the Tea Party, they actually had a, an agenda, which was uh, austerity to cut fiscal responsibility, et cetera. And they didn't really run on that this time. What we can expect is a lot of a very aggressive oversight. Um, the debt ceiling, which is a traditional congressional uh, responsibility to raise the ability to borrow the full faith and credit of the United States, is going to become a brinksmanship issue early next year, and there's going to be a lot of oversight hearings. We can, of course, assume right off the top of the back that the January 6th committee, the investigative committee, will be shuttered. Um, that's going to be one of the first things that they do, and they're going to start equally aggressive investigations into, for example, uh, Hunter Biden's connections to Ukraine, to Burisma, and to China. Okay, so we're not looking at smooth sailing ahead. It's going to be a, a contentious Washington, I think. Tyson Barker, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.